Welcome to day 14 of Vlogmas. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through my client portal. So every time I sign a new client now, I give them access to their own client portal and this is where we're managing their project. So instead of going back and forward with email or uploading things in 100 different one places, we both have access to this one space. Everything is managed here. We both can see the progress, we can edit, we can update and all that good stuff. Now, I will say this is something I've only recently introduced. I've used it with three clients so far and so far it's gone well, but I'm still a little bit on the fence about using it because I know that some clients aren't so good with technology. So I'm still a little bit in the testing period, but I thought I'd share it with you in case it's something you want to implement in your business. Now, in terms of giving away templates, today I've got two to share. The first one is my actual client portal that I use for website design. So if you're a designer, absolutely use it, customize it, make it your own. And if you're not a designer, you will have that as a reference point of what a filled in one looks like. And I'll be sharing a blank one with you as well. So you can customize, add in your own steps and adjust it to your own business. So hopefully giving away those two will set you up well. And as we go through this video, you'll see how it works and how to edit and customize it. Now I'm gonna break it down into a few parts. First, we'll go through the client portal. Then we'll go through the backend databases that run the client portal. And then to finish off, I'm going to show you how I add this in my projects in action task database so that the client only sees their client portal, but I'm managing things on the back end in my projects database. And we're gonna see how those two intertwine so it's not duplicating tasks in a bunch of different places. So to begin, let's make my big head a little bit smaller because it doesn't need to be that big. We'll move it over here and I'll walk you through the portal. So at the top here, I'll change this to the client's logo. Obviously I'll change the name out to their name. I'll add a little welcome message here and then I usually embed a Loom video. So I'll just record a quick couple of minute Loom video and I'll share it in here showing them how to use and edit the client portal so they're not confused on what to do. Then over here on the right, we have a project tracker so they can see their progress and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Then we have help and support and this basically replaces email. So instead of sending emails all the time, they can come in here, they can add a new message, they can give it a name we'll just call it new message, then they can open it up, they can add in their details, and then they can change the status here to needs review. Or if I'm adding a message for them, I could change it to client action required. Once they've done that, say it's reviewing something, we can come in here, change it to client approved, and then I will mark it as complete. And yet it's still here, so everything is stored in one place, there's no going through Gmail, it's only our project in here. So this is just for us. Then if we come down a little bit, you'll see I've got a project management section and we've got a bunch of different views here. So I've got a step-by-step -step process and you'll see here I've broken it down into my various stages. Then we have a project timeline. Now nothing is appearing here because I haven't added dates in, but as soon as I add dates, they will appear here. Then we have all the documents related to the project. We have our meetings here and then we have resources. And this is all based off of this. We're just filtering it by what type of step it is. For example, invoices and payments would be a document. So here is the main page and they can just go through and say we're starting with project inquiry. They can open it up. Now, sometimes clients want a follow up to their inquiry call or I just invite them to book a 20 minute call with me whenever they need. So I'll include that in here and I'll just insert my scheduler from Acuity. So it's just a case of embedding that in here. If you use a different platform, that works too. So they can go through the step and once they book that, they can go back to the client portal and I can change this to complete. They can view all of their invoices and their payments here. Once I invoice them in PayPal, which is what I use, is I'll download their invoice, upload it here. It's all set up. I'll adjust their payment status here. If they want to make the payment through PayPal, they can just click this button and it'll take them through to do that. Then we have a brand proposal. Now this is something we've discussed in Vlogmas and I've shared the template already, but what I'll do is once the proposal is approved and I set up the client portal is I'll just click 
to the right of the proposal and I'll move it into here. So I'll move it into this project management database so that when they click in, it will be viewed here and they can see the proposal that they agreed to. And again, I would just mark these as say this one's in progress, say this one is complete. And as I start marking things off as complete, if we come up, you'll see here it adjusts the project tracker so they can see their progress. Then we have things like the brand strategy assessment. So this is before I have a strategy call. I ask them to complete an assessment. That's all in here. So then I can review that before our strategy call. They can come in here and they can book the call. So again, I've embedded my scheduler just to show you an example of what that looks like. You would just embed your own and they can book that in. And again, when they're ready to upload their website copy and brand assets, they can come in here and do that. I've also included prompts and guidance for them with that. And then we have all of our various other steps as well. And I won't bother walking through all of them. Just know that they're here. We're following the process, including refinements, things like that. So everything is managed here for the client. And this is run off of two databases. The main one is this project process. So if we open this up, you'll see here it looks a little bit messy, but I'm going to walk you through it. So here we have our various steps and I break them down by phase. So you'll see here, I've just got this arrow. You could customize this, but then I've got my different phases. And this is linking to a different database called my project tracker. And I need to do this in order to get that percentage. It's the easiest way to access it. So this is just linking to that so that we can get that progress bar. But because this phase isn't a step we're taking. It shouldn't impact the progress. The steps within it will, but the phase itself won't. So I don't link this one and I don't give a stage. I just change it to type as a phase and then I'll select the status here. Then we have our actual steps. So here we've got our project inquiry. We are linking this to the tracker this would have a date attached. The stage is onboarding. So to change any stage, just click in, click these three dots, change the label, change the color, delete any you don't want to add a new one. Just start typing and you'll see here it lets you create a new one. I've got responsible and then under type, this is where things get interesting. So here I've got project phase. I've got an action step document meetings, resources, inboxes, and invoices. So everything we are doing is run off of this one database, but by breaking it down into type, we can add filters so we can view certain things in certain places. So we have that inbox. Everything that goes in there is marked as inbox. If we have an action step, it's marked as an action step, and that's going to affect the progress tracker. Documents are all stored in one place. All of our meetings can be viewed in one place because we're adding these tags and that's creating those filters. And the same with invoices as well. So if we go on process, you'll see here, that's the view that we viewed in the client portal where I've just broken it down. And if I come over here, you'll see all I've done is I've made it a list. I've changed properties to show status, but I would probably show due date as well. Or I could turn that off. And then we have it grouped by stage and I've worked it so that it's in the right order. Then we have project timeline. So we haven't assigned dates, but if we go back and we start assigning dates here, so we'll just do this one as today and tomorrow and the next day. If we come back in to project timeline, you'll see here these now all appear on our timeline. So meetings, you'll see this is filtered by the type as meeting, documents, same thing, filtered as document, resources are filtered by resources. So it's really simple when we break it down and then inbox is filtered by inbox. And then we have our project calendar. And again, anything assigned a date will appear here. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, if we go back to the tracker, this is really basic. All it is, is it's assigning the task to the project so that we can do this roll up and figure out the percentage of action tasks completed. So we don't even have to touch that. It does it automatically, but it's just so we can give this view to our clients. And usually I will just hide this or I'll even move it into my projects database once it's all set up. So this is my client portal and how I give access to clients 
is I come up to the top, hit share, and I will add their email in here and invite them. Once we have given them access, they will be able to come in here and edit it. And what I'll usually do on certain databases like here is I'll come over here and I'll lock the views so they can't customize or edit this because it's locked. But anything where I need them to be able to access it, I'll leave that unchecked. But you'll see here, because this is really straightforward, as far as the client knows, they just hit new and add a new message. They don't have to worry about what's in the back end. Same with all the steps. They're just going to follow step by step and see exactly what they need to in the right place. Now, this is all client facing. So let me show you how I set this up with projects on the back end. So if we come into my action zone here and I click on the drop down to add a new project, I'm going to pick new client template. I'm going to open this up and that's going to take a few minutes to load just because it's a relatively large template. So earlier in Vlogmas, I shared a projects and action task database with you. Again, just sign up. Link is in the description. But I shared two different templates and one of those was a project template and the other one was a client template. And I said during that video, these are identical, but I'm going to show you later in the month where they differ. This is where they differ. So here, if we come in, we just add in all of our regular information for a new project. I won't go into that in too much detail. So if we scroll down, you'll see I've got my project overview. And if you watched that last video on projects and action tasks, you'll be familiar with this section here, our project management. So if I click here and I show the database title, you'll see this is linked to my action tasks here. And all I've done is filtered it to show only this project. Now what's different about this is if we come up here, you'll see I've moved the client portal to in here. Once you've got this all set up, you can pull this client portal into your new client template within your projects action task. You can pull this in so it'll create a new one every time all set up for you. So this is what we're giving access to the client. So they're only seeing this page. They're not seeing anything else. But what we can do is we can come in here and we can pull in the information. So we can pull in the inbox from that client portal into our projects database. So we don't have to go into the client portal. All of that information is here in our project. And again, here we can pull in their documents, we can pull in their resources, and we can pull in the meetings. So the way I did that is added a linked database. So we've got the client portal set up, and all I've done is add a linked view of the database. I'm pulling it in from this project process, which we've set up. And you'll see here, I've got all of the different views set up. So I can pull in whatever step that I want to take. So if I wanted to pull in the whole process, I could do that here. If I just want to do the inbox, I would show that here. So this is what the client is seeing, but we're managing it all within our projects section where we have all of our action tasks and all of our calendar set up so that we're not having to go into the client portal, come back into our project, go back in. We can manage it all in one place. We can adjust the different settings here without having to go into it as well. But we have our own space for managing our own action tasks and writing our own notes separate from the client. So this is where we carry out the internal work and then we give access to the client portal here. So like I said, what you can do once you add that template in is you can go into your projects. You can click this drop down here. You can click edit this template, hit edit, open this up and you can move your client portal in here. And then every time you create a new project under the new client template, it's automatically going to add that client portal all set up for you. And all you have to do is come in here and customize it to your client. So I found that to be really helpful. Like I said, I'm still playing around with it. I know more and more people are switching to Notion and exploring steps like setting up a client portal in here. So I didn't want to hold back. I wanted to share it with you. If it's helpful, let me know in the description. It'd be super helpful to hear your feedback. If you want access to this template and all of the templates I'm sharing this month, just sign up uh, for my newsletter. The link is in the description. Be sure to subscribe click the bell icon, all that promotional stuff, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video.